organic has been a buzzword to many grocery store consumers for a long while. Before the advent of many chemicals, pesticides and herbicides through most food had been organic no questions asked. But, when did organic foods grow to evolve and get so popular throughout the years, you'll want to watch this video to find out what really happened. Welcome to One Away. Also, watch this video to the end, as we give you some tips on what to talk about when you talk about organic food. Hint, it's not only organic. Before that, please give us a thumbs up if you find this video useful. And, please hit that subscribe button for notifications on our latest videos. Since its coinage in 1939, when a man named Lord Northbourne put it on the map, organic food has taken a vast development. Back in the day, it was to highlight a difference between foods grown without chemical additives, and foods which are grown with help. In his book, Salt Sugar Fat, the Pulitzer Prize journalist Michael Moss investigates one of the most insidious periods in the American food industry. He found a set of documents that gave him information about an event that happened in 1999. Before the beginning of the new millennium, the then most prevalent food companies in America that formulated, marketed, and sold junk food, had a meeting. This was an oddball event given that these companies were each other's competition for what Moss refers to as the stomach share of the grocery store, the center aisles. Even odder, this rare and private meeting was to talk about the rising obesity problem in America, and thus the world. The reason for all this? Turns out there was an alarm from an insider. One of the big insiders was from the head office of Kraft, who presented dozens and dozens of slides that their products links to obesity, diabetes and even cancer. This was a plea, from one of their own to make their products safer. But, the then head of General Mills highlighted and insisted that they will not mess around with the design of the industry family jewels the unholy trinity of salt, sugar, and fat. Salt, which turns out, humans don't really like that much until six months of development, or when fed copious amounts, as in the case of their products. But salt is just a vehicle to help preserve the other two jewels. Sugar, which humans find pleasurable, but had been designed by industries to induce a bliss point, a kind of peak, when you crave more because it's not too much or too little. The research took 52 sugary flavors with over 3,000 consumer reports, all to find a mathematical algorithm to get that exact point. Fat, which is dense with so many calories, but had been designed based on its mouthfeel, which block receptors in the brain to identify the calories in their products. Even worse, when fat plus sugar are combined, they short-circuit the brain even more, as in the case the food industry is putting all manner of cheese in almost every salty and sugary snack, when available. The stomach share of the center aisles, and the addictive design of these foods, are what has propelled many middle-class families to buy organic. In order to label a producer as organic, some caveats are in place. Namely, inspection and certification, all of which cost a great deal of money for organic corporations to label and even market purveyors. Compared to what Michael Pollan calls, edible food-like substances of the center aisle, organic is better, with fewer allergens too, which is one of the main concerns with conventional too. But, it's not perfect, with some cases of fraud. Organic plants that have some sediments of pesticides on them. Organic cage-free chickens that are only taken out some of the time, and placed back to the cage. Organic grass-fed cows that are fed only parts of the grass and most of the feed is genetically modified corn. Even with its faults, and though they are expensive, organic foods are a system that can help customers get a better product for their families. In 2017 alone, foods with the organic label had taken 5% of shares in almost all retail stores and even made it through a recession. Want to try it out? Look for these organic-related terms. The Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, updated every year. Non-GMO, pesticide-free. Pastured raised, for chicken and even pigs. Grass finished, for cows. It's not an option for everybody, granted, but the labeling of organic and its other terms can inform you about your health, and support the producers who want to keep the fields open for an ecologically sustainable business.